Take a walk, a first few faltering steps. Look for a path in the landscape, an unseen map of the past. From there, you can follow the old ways from the sea, walking against the flow through the Power Scourt estate and up onwards along the Dargal River. Trace forgotten pilgrim paths underground too, past burial grounds and on, up through the deep glacial valley, scattered with sparkling granite, through a fairyland of myth and folktale. And on, over the mass paths and the famine roads that crisscross the valley, these ghost roads leading nowhere. For in this valley, one could almost believe unbelievable things one can almost see the unseeable. Then travel on, up towards Glen Cree, the Glen of the Heart, and on to other untranslatable places, forgotten places known and unknown. It's a harshly beautiful landscape, this world beyond, where freedoms can be lost and found, distant latitudes of peat and scrubland and heather bloom. But pause for a moment, here at Glen Cree, where the winding road meets the limitless sky. Centuries ago, rebels hid out here, the colonised, the oppressed, those hostile to the crown. And in time, soldiers came to marshal the land, to tame this wilderness, marching out from Dublin Castle, they laid a military road across the feather beds to Glen Cree and beyond. A grey stone barracks was built here at the close of the 18th century. Stern, secure, foreboding. But at dead of night, the rebels came. They tumbled walls, frustrated dreams, but the soldiers prevailed for a time. Then the famine came. And after that great hunger, young, emaciated children wandered the roads lost and feral. And in time, the barracks became a reformatory for near on a century. Little boys were brought, the lost and delinquent and dispossessed, dark battalions of them, boy soldiers of Christ. Sometimes you can sense them, these shadows of the past, whistling in a silence that isn't really silence at all. Then the wars came, as wars so often do, even to the shores of neutral Ireland, bombs and bodies falling from the darkening skies. And in the aftermath, children came again. Different this time, refugees from Poland and Germany, orphaned by the war. Operation Shamrock, it was called. The Red Cross and the Sisters of Charity found shelter for them in Glen Cree. There were children fostered, friendships made, letters written. They would return home later to Krakow and Dusseldorf and elsewhere, but they'd never forget the kindness that they found in Glen Cree. They made a graveyard for the German airmen fallen to their death from Irish skies and for those lost at sea off the lonely coast of Donegal. The German cemetery, it's called, carved out of the old Glencree quarry. Every November still they come without fail to remember the unremembered, the lost and the fallen, the horror of war. And then, for a time, all was quiet in the valley. Wildflowers bloomed by day, and the deer moved silent and unseen through the forests. But then the troubles came once more. 
the old divisions reappearing, ancient hatreds resurrected, the tribal savagery and the gleaming wound, a past full of hatred echoing into the present. In Glencree, the old barracks lay forgotten and disused, a storehouse of memories, geological samples, earth and rock, and cobweb film sets and ghosts of its past. An ordinary woman came then, Una O'Higgins O'Malley, ordinary and yet remarkable, with a radical streak and an open heart. She'd had her own troubles, of course, her own violent and tragic losses, but she transformed them and they helped her forge a new path, one of reconciliation and forgiveness. For in 1974, an idea was born. No more than a feeling at first, the mere hint of a possibility, a creaking gate, an opening door, a thought that you might come here to Glencree, away from it all, the madness and the violence and the unforgiving streets. And an idea was born that one could bring together the divided communities, the old enemies, gather them together so that they might tell each other stories, circle around to glimpse each other's deeply felt hurts. And they did. And their stories were heard, built bridges and then crossed them. But it wasn't easy, never easy. It was hard won this coming together, this faltering peace. But here, somehow in the quietude, the shared space, somehow they found another place, a place of peace and reconciliation, a place called Glencree, but that wasn't just Glencree. It was a fifth province, a sacred space, a space that they could hold, a space that they could share, an act of faith, but beyond faith. And from this center, small joys emerged, smoke signals of hope, rose up and were discerned in other far-flung places, the fragile, dark corners of the world. For there's a kind of kinship born out of peace building, and the journey's never over, and new challenges never far. But these challenges can be met with gestures small and large, in acts of kindness and hospitality, in creativity and diversity, in learning and sharing, in cultivating and integrating. And with each gathering, a brighter future beckons. For Glen Cree is both a place and an idea. And every day, with every dawn, its story is unfolding anew. And the need has never been greater. Working with those who've known violence and trauma, the victims, the survivors, with those of all faiths and none, the dispossessed and displaced, lost in the global storm. But in order to do this, there are stark realities too. Bills to be paid, buildings to be maintained, hard facts, the prosaic demands of possibility. And funding is needed, of course, urgently. For funding is its own sort of energy, fuel for progress, allowing Glencree to hold the space, to embrace a shared future, a communal vision. So we travel on in hope. Take a walk, hold out your hand, and together we can again take our first few steps.